I recently posted this video and asked you guys what is going on in this video. This is a patient that flew in from out of town for a rhinoplasty. And as a finishing touch for her rhinoplasty, I did a little bit of lip filler. And for the first time in almost 20 years, tens of thousands of syringes of filler, I had this event happen. And my first thought was, let me get a video camera and share it with 125,000 of my closest friends so that I can educate people about this. And so many of you answered this correctly. This was an occlusion event, a vascular occlusion event of the inferior coronary labial artery. So let's break that down. Vascular means blood vessel, occlusion means blockage, inferior bottom lip, not top lip. It was the left inferior. Coronary labial artery. Lips is labial, artery is a incoming blood vessel. And coronary, it doesn't mean coronary like your heart. Coronary starts from the root word corona, which means crown, like coronation. So the coronary labial arteries surround your lips. The coronary arteries of your heart are a crown on your heart. So inferior of the labial, inferior coronary labial artery, left side got occluded. Um, I asked you all in that context what you would do to manage the situation. So first of all, a couple of you came up with a couple confounders. It might be lidocaine with epinephrine. Epinephrine blanches tissues. I do use lidocaine with epinephrine in the nose when I'm doing surgery. So that was a good thought. Maybe it was blanching some tissue down here and it was a red herring. Or maybe there was an endotracheal tube or breathing tube pressing on there, blanching out and injuring the tissue. That can happen when breathing tubes are used, but I do all my surgery under deep sedation, so no breathing tube. So good thoughts about red herrings. You went into then, uh, almost everyone said, get out the hyaluronidase, either Hyalinex brand or Vitrace brand, and break up the filler that is in the blood vessel. So when we're trying to get that tissue to get circulation again, we are racing against the clock. We, If we allow the tissue to have no oxygen for too long a period of time, the tissue can die. And so um, it goes from being either a white, white blanch like this. This is a classic vascular occlusion. Some vascular occlusions are not so classic. Sometimes it's not white, white blanch. Sometimes it's a funny looking bruise with pain. So if you are a patient and you have just a really weird looking bruise with pain, it can start a couple hours after your injection. Or if you're a provider and your patient calls you and they've got a funny looking bruise with pain, you need to get yourself together in the same room. Photos and video do not show color well. That is a huge, huge problem. If I get sent a video or a photo of a possible occlusion, sometimes it looks terrible. When I see it in real life, it's fine, and vice versa. Sometimes it looks okay, and when I see it in real life, it's terrible. Color does not convey well on the phone. So if you're looking at a flap for circulation or at a lip or any other area nose for vascular occlusion, see that person in person. Anyway. So we're breaking down to two things to get circulation in oxygen specifically back into the tissue as quickly as possible. Number one is to get the filler out of the vessel. And so one thing, the first thing I did, I started massaging the tissue. If you imagine there's a little lump of filler in the blood vessel and you smash it and mold it, well, maybe you can get that lump to, to move on, go on through the blood vessel and restore circulation. So the first thing I started doing is mashing the tissue and using a warm compress to allow the smooth muscles of the vessel wall to open up and hopefully allow the, the bolus, the little blockage to move on. Um, while I was doing that, of course, I had sent my staff to get some hyaluronidase, the enzyme that dissolves hyaluronic acid filler. So the two common brand names in the US are Hyalinex and Vitrace. They both work by dissolving the chemical bonds between the, the box cars of the filler train. So it takes a huge train of filler and breaks it down to individual boxcars, so to speak, which can then move on much more quickly. So this video is about 40 seconds after the original video. So within less than a minute, my staff had the Hyalinex in the room. I had injected 150 units of Hyalinex directly into the area where I thought the occlusion was. And within 40 seconds, we had the occlusion completely restored. Uh, and you can see her color is beautiful and normal again. I continued to massage, I want to get that bolus moving, um, continued the warm compresses. Other things that I did and can be done, you all mentioned these, uh, one is topical nitroglycerin paste, nitro paste. We don't want to put it inside the lip where it can absorb really quickly, but on the, on the skin of the lip, the dry lip, that can help, again, open up the smooth muscles of the blood vessel wall and allow that bolus to move on. Um, 
hyperbaric oxygen is something that a few of you mentioned. Um, hyperbaric oxygen is getting into an oxygen chamber where the pressure is high. And even if there isn't circulation exactly here, if we get the oxygen pressure in your bloodstream high enough, the neighboring tissues can diffuse oxygen into that area and help save the tissue while you're restoring circulation. So we do have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber in the office. And I thought about putting her in there. The problem is, remember, she is immediately after surgery. So she's drowsy. And in hyperbaric oxygen chambers, a couple, of people, a couple types of people shouldn't go in there. People with lung problems, like tendencies towards pneumothorax, people that have problems clearing pressure in their ears, people that are not fully conscious, people that are claustrophobic. So she is not fully conscious because she's just getting out of anesthesia. And I asked her um, as she was getting more awake, hey, you have any problems clearing your ears? And she said, yeah, as a matter of fact, as the plane was landing yesterday, she flew in from Utah for her surgery, as the plane was landing, I had a really hard time clearing my ears. My ears wouldn't clear until I pinched my nose and blew really hard. Well, this person should not go into a hyperbaric chamber half asleep. She's at risk for a uh, middle ear injury or eardrum rupture or something like that. So we did not do hyperbaric oxygen, even though we had it available on site. Uh, a couple others of you mentioned aspirin and DMSO. Those are medications to uh, thin the blood uh, and help blood cells move more easily. Uh, of course, she just had rhinoplasty surgery, so she is at risk for bleeding. I don't, and if we give her an aspirin, it increases her risk of bleeding for the next couple of weeks. So since we were able to restore circulation with solely warm compresses, nitropase, uh, and really the Hyalinex, the hyaluronic acid enzyme uh, dissolver, it got our circulation back within 40 seconds. So since we actually had circulation back, I felt like there was more risk than benefit in adding aspirin to her treatment regimen. So what we finally ended up doing for her is the second I noticed the vascular occlusion, I started massaging warm compresses. We had those in the room already because they use hot water to mold the nasal splint. Um, within 40 seconds, we had Hylinex in the room. The first 150 units were in with complete return of color. Um, I then made her stay in town overnight because this can recur. So I had her send me photos that first evening. They looked perfectly fine. If there's any question, I would have seen her in person or hotel. And then I had her come in in person the next morning. You can see her, she looked perfectly fine. I let her go back to Utah. And then I checked in with her one last time. This is two days after the occlusion. And again, the tissue looks perfectly fine. There's no evidence of any, that there was ever any occlusion. There's bruising from the injections, bruising from the hyaluronidase injections, but uh, no evidence of tissue damage whatsoever. So I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, it's, it's a weird thing to have your first filler injection complication and immediately say, you know what, I'm not gonna brush it under the rug, I'm gonna share it in front of hundreds of thousands of people. But hopefully you've picked up a management pearl from any of these little things. And uh, hopefully this video will help prevent many, many, many people from going untreated with their vascular occlusion.